can get there? Okay. So um, another area that was a priority within the needs assessment was to be able to describe to potential equine owners what the cost of having a horse would be. Um, and so we narrowed it down beyond all the expenses, such as feed and boarding and whatnot, to try to hone in on the health care costs. And I do realize feeding them is part of health care. Um, but our ag economists felt that they could, in an info sheet, come up with the potential costs of feeding based on hay costs and feed costs um, and whatnot, and that the potential owner could certainly check on boarding costs in their area because they're going to vary a lot. So we tried to narrow it down to some basic um, health care areas. Um, we foresee potentially this being one of the areas that people may not want to respond to because it has to do with what they spend. Um, but again, if the VMO can encourage them to respond by saying this is really a priority and we want people to understand what the potential investment is in having, having an incline and that it was a priority within the needs assessment. So the first question in this section, F1, um, has to do with hoof care. And like the lameness section, there's a leading question um, about the number of equine that they can provide this information for. So this goes to Tom's question. They may not know um, the average cost, let's say, of hoof care for all the equine at a boarding facility. But if the participant owns some of those equine, um, they know for theirs. So how many equine are we able to get this level of information? And then we have subsequent questions about the hoof care uh, costs. And a key part of this section is really paying attention to the question being asked. Because in some sections we say, what's the typical cost of the service? And in other areas we're saying, what did they spend per equine per year? And so it's really important as you read the stem of the question to pay attention to what's being asked and repeat it if necessary um, for the person responding. So we have a section on hoof care. Um, the next section, that's the, or not section, but part of this uh, section, F3, is um, about veterinary services costs. Um, and again, <clears throat> we asked about how many they can um, tell us this level of detail. Um, and uh, again, paying attention to what we're asking in the question about uh, what is the typical cost for each service versus a time period per uh, each one is important. Uh, we have a section on the number of equine um, for insect and tick control cost information, because again, we see this as a critical part um, of health care. And in F6, um, we asked about the total cost for all insect and tick control products in the previous 12 months for the operation. So again, being very careful in this section um, as you as you ask the question, in the stem of the question, clarifying for the participant what we're asking for. And then in F7, we asked about veterinary products, because we realized um, for some operations, they may never use a veterinarian, uh, but they do um, purchase veterinary products. And so we want to be able to capture that. They may use a veterinarian, but they don't purchase um, all or some of the products from the veterinarian. So here we're trying to differentiate veterinary services from the costs um, of products. OK. So um, then in F7, um, we are trying to uh, capture uh, vaccination costs um, per equine um, in the previous 12 months. So again, really paying attention. Some of them are per service. Some of them are operation level, and some of them are cost uh, per equine in that time period. So really important to pay attention to the stem of the question. Our ag economists helped us develop these questions. They were pre-tested. This was a section that we had to refine 
uh, the questions and choices um, quite a lot, mostly because a lot of this information doesn't exist and uh, we learned a lot in, in the pre-testing section. So I'll go ahead and open it up for any um, questions or comments. Um, operator uh, pound two for anyone that has questions or comments in this section. And Allison is telling me something's already here. Yeah, we have a written question. Is it recommended for the VMO to send the questionnaire to the cooperator ahead of the interview date? So while others are getting their line unmuted if they have questions or comments, we had it written in. Um, so in our um, development of this phase of the study, we had six um, people help us, um, one from each district, um, to give us the field perspective. And as we discussed sharing the questionnaire in advance, uh, we actually got quite mixed input. Um, one of the um, subject matter, matter experts from the field indicated that they wouldn't even consider doing this questionnaire without sending it to the participant via email, let's say or in the mail ahead of time um, because they'd want them to see what the questions were and, and be prepared to answer them. One concern we have about sharing it is that it is rather lengthy and without the personal touch of an interview, potentially people would see it and then say, oh, no, no, we don't want to participate. So I, I think it's a tough choice. Um, we trust you to try to determine people's commitment. If they're very committed and they have a large operation, um, I think it would certainly expedite having the questionnaire in their hands beforehand. I, we're just worried if we share it that it may scare some people off. Um, we did have a, another previous question about how long we thought the questionnaire would take. And there's no one answer for that because it really depends on the size of the operation and whether they did some of these things, because you saw some of the leading questions that they can skip out of, that certainly would shorten the questionnaire for some of the operations. But for large operations where they're trying to describe 100 horses, um, it's going to take longer than if they had three donkeys um, and they know them all by name and, and they had no disease and they did no health care, uh, it's going to be a pretty quick, quick survey. We have a question about um, question eight in the section. For letter A, we have vaccine purchase not obtained from veterinarian. Yes. We want all of C through J also to have purchase not obtained from veterinarian. I think that um, we were trying to capture the products, but I think that that's from any source, the rest of them. I don't think very many are going to be purchasing uh, dewormers. Um, I think if they purchased drugs specifically and they weren't part of the veterinary service, then we would want to capture it in this section. This, this was very, very, very difficult because for some respondents, um, let's say they started a horse on trimethoprim sulfa and they left the bottle, and that's all part of the vet bill. Uh, so this was really trying to capture uh, products that were purchased separate from the veterinary service, um, but if they were specifically purchased from the veterinarian, but it wasn't part of a veterinary visit, then I think we would want to try to capture it in that section of eight. We have another question. Can you send us, can we send a cheat sheet with all the list of the information that the operators will need to have on hand? I think it'd be great if you want to send a list of what you perceive they need to have. I think we tried in the um, intro and the manual to suggest the materials they'd want to have. Uh, we think it'd be good if they have their calendar because as they talk about when they do things, they may have it on a calendar, a checkbook, um, their, how they pay their bills, a list of those um, potentially could help them in responding. Uh, certainly, their veterinary records and any um, copies of information they have from their veterinarian can be very helpful. And if you as a VMO want to send that in advance um, or tell them when you're on the phone, uh, we think that's a great idea. Town two, anything else? We, I think this past one is going to be challenging. Um, we worked very, very hard on it. Um, 
the manual, I think, tries to address the challenging areas, but again, as Al said on the lane, this um, writing in information is, is acceptable and we can do our best to categorize it when we get it. Okay, pound two, anyone? Last chance on this section. Uh, at this time, there are no callers in the queue. Okay, so we have section G up. If Jason would just move it up uh, a tad. So um, it's very important that this section get um, completed. I mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. Um, we need to account for all of the operations that were uh, agreeing to be contacted for phase two. So we need to know if they um, decided not to respond and, and the reason or if they couldn't be reached. Um, we really need that information um, on all of the operations. So either a completed questionnaire, a refusal, or um, and why, and, um, or they couldn't be reached uh, to respond. Okay, so now I'm going to go back uh, to the first section, Jason. And uh, I'll just, um, I won't apologize because everybody has busy schedules, so we took these in the order we had uh, people to support those uh, sections. So um, now we're at page 17. And this is the first page of the questionnaire. So the DMO or AHT that's going to be um, administering the questionnaire um, we do need you right there at the beginning to put in um, the state, um, which is called the FIP code, and they're listed here, um, and then the operation number, which is a three-digit number. So um, in the files that the uh, coordinators got, um, they're very likely a five-digit number. So they have the state and then the operation level. <laughs> and uh, we need that on the questionnaire. Uh, we are going to be interacting, if you will, the responses to this questionnaire, to responses that we got in the NAS questionnaire. So it's really important that we have this NOMS ID on the questionnaire. Uh, we asked for the interviewer's initials, um, the date of the interview, and then we have a very brief inventory section. So we captured quite a lot of this inventory information during the NAS visit, but here we're trying to capture um, things that potentially may have changed since the previous visit. Um, so we ask type of resident equine, um, and we also ask age. And it's very important at the beginning there uh, that you read the entire section on uh, the definition of a resident equine, because throughout the questionnaire we're going to be referring to resident equine, and I think um, it's important that that be read in its entirety and, and not be abbreviated. The inventory is used as a denominator for analysis. As Martin said, there's more age breakout in some of these sections than we captured in the previous questionnaire, plus age could change um, from the previous questionnaire to this questionnaire. Um, so we ask that, that those two uh, inventory questions be completed for denominator purposes. So um, I'm going to go ahead and ask if there are any questions on section A, pound two, or write them in. Okay. Oh, there's one coming. Being born. We have received a verbal question as well. Okay. Call Let's your line. Let's do the verbal one first. Okay. Uh, hello, this is uh, Roger Krogel. And I see in the questionnaire you don't have the uh, NOMS ID on each page, which you've had in previous studies. I think it's, uh, it's extra stuff to do, but do you want the NOMS ID written on every page? Uh, I had suggested that, and um, <laughs> I think it's a great thing to do in case the questionnaire came apart. Um, we had an issue with the NAS questionnaire, but I was told typically we just put it on the first page because it's redundant. But I would love for you to put it on every page. And then, did we have a write-in question? Okay. Any other comments? 
I just want to do uh, one quick uh, scenario, um, and Tom's already brought it up, and then I'm going to turn it over to Abby for the sum up. Um, so we think for the majority of operations, uh, the person that owns the operation or manages the operation is who you want to make the appointment with. You want to make the appointment with whoever is most able to answer the equine health related questions. Um, on some operations, this may be the owner designating um, their barn manager because they actually know more of the details than, than they know. So the key on setting up the visit is being sure the person that can answer the questions is going to be um, available to do so. Um, in signing the participant agreement, the person you're making the contact with and doing the interview is agreeing to all of those parts. So if they can't agree to all of those parts for all of the equine, um, particularly when we get to the biologics, for boarding facilities, one thing that Dr. Pelzal McCluskey suggested is that when you're talking to the um, potential participant to begin with, that they consider putting up a sign-up sheet um, at a facility um, for the boarders to say, yes, I'm okay with my horse being in this or not, and then that owner of the facility would be representing them or um, committing to the participation. The boarding facilities in the previous equine non studies have been a pretty small percent of the overall operation. Um, I haven't gotten to see the data from phase one yet that Lindsay has, and I'm going to guess it's probably pretty similar. But they do present a challenge because they have a lot of equine and they're owned by diverse people. So all that we can say is we think um, within the questionnaire we've tried in the sections, we think that the owner of the operation could answer the questions for most of the equine, not to narrow down the population number, but for the sections where we feel it's challenging because an owner of a boarding facility couldn't answer for all, then we tried to capture that uh, denominator in those sections. So I'm hoping that um, helps with that particular uh, challenge. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Abby for a sum up. And again, uh, this doesn't uh, terminate our partnership. So if you come up with ideas or questions now that you're focused on this, send them to Abby. And if she can't answer them, um, she'll track us down to get it done. Um, and recognize if you have a question, probably other people do too. And uh, we can share those you know, with the, the entire group. So, Abby, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you to sum up. All right. Thanks, Josie. And I just want to say job well done today. I'm conducting the webinar. This is really good. Uh, so the first thing on my list, and most of the stuff we've already talked about today, so it's going to be kind of brief, is the letter status. That letter has been, and that's the letter that has the coordinator contact info on it that's going to the participants. That letter has been printed. I'm stuffing envelopes this week, and they'll be mailed out next week. And so you can start making your contacts um, the week of April 4th. The participant agreement, I just wanted to remind you again that I do not want a copy of that. So one stays with the participant, and one you're going to um, keep filed away in your office, and you will hold on to that until I tell you to destroy it. Um, shipping of completed questionnaires to NOM. So I'm not a huge fan of getting one questionnaire at a time, but I'm also not a fan of getting them all at the end either. So we have to find a balance in there. Um, so and always, I'm always happy to send a UPS shipping label um, if that's helpful to get those here timely. Um, the AgLearn training modules have now been moved over to the NOMS website, so all the state folks can access those. I'll send out the email link to where to find those to the coordinators, and then they can distribute that to uh, the field staff. So what you'll be able to find on there is the m and overview, the equine study background and then the update on the study background, the NAS survey process, the equine vaccination video, the current trends in the horse industry, parasite control, there's a tick scratching exam and collection video, the manual can be found on there, and as soon as that tick presentation gets recorded by the Angelus, that will be on there too. So once I have that tick recording from the Angelus, that's when I'm going to start the CE credit package. So in the meantime, Field staff, 
coordinators, they all just need to watch it. The field staff needs to let the coordinators know if they've watched some or all of them. And then I will send an email to the coordinators asking for their list, and then we'll get certificates made from there. What else? Um, so on those USB sticks, there was supposed to be a column on there on the ops that already participated in parasite collection, and I think that got left off. So what I'm going to do is just send the coordinators an email with the NOMS ID of the ops that have already participated in that. So that's an easy fix. Um, today I will send out the information on next week's biologic webinar. And let's see. I do have some extra training manuals, so if you need more, if you need an extra or you need some more questionnaires with the participant agreement, just shoot me an email and let me know and I can get those to you. Um, what else? NBSL shipped out a complete set of kits to, for you to have prior to that webinar. So I, I think they sent them ground, so you should start seeing them maybe the end of this week. If you don't get one, um, shoot me an email and let me know. I am going to be out of the office Friday. I'm going to Arizona to visit my mother for Easter, and I won't be back until um, the webinar on what, next Wednesday. And I don't know who's going to cover for me, but I'll let you know when I figure that out. What else? The example kits, um, they're actually for real use. But they were only sent to the coordinator that was first in the list for each uh, state, I believe. So not all the VMOs and AHTs will have received one of those, just the coordinators to look through. Um, you can use that in your uh, additional training, so you can actually show it. And when we have the webinar next week, um, we actually have a PowerPoint that uh, Allison is going to present where we go through the contents of the kit um, and the paperwork in there. And so for those of you that have the kit, you can actually follow along and, and look at what's uh, in those. And then, so this, this webinar was recorded. And so I'm not, it should take us a few days before we're able to provide that. So I'm hopeful that I can get you the recording um, by next week's webinar. But we'll provide you an update um, next week on what, what's happening there. And now I'm sweating. I don't know. Is there anything else? <laughs> As always, just email me or call me with questions, concerns, needs, whatever. Here's a question. Should we wait until after May 1st to begin the biological sampling? I know we need to wait to review the sample collection materials first. OK. So none of those farm visits are supposed to happen before May 1st. But you can start in April making contacts to set up those visits. Um, on the webinar next week, um, we should have some information about ordering the kits. But my understanding is as the coordinator anticipates how many kits of the various types, and we would ask you to wait till after the webinar next week so you know what those are, um, those orders can be placed with Abby. And she can ship them either all to the coordinator, say for the state of California, and then that coordinator ships them out to the VMO, or the coordinator can request three blood kits go to this VMO, um, and they can be shipped directly to that VMO. Is that correct, Abby and Camilla? Yes. Yes. And uh, we should know next week when the kits will be available from MBSL to be ordered. So they'll be shipped from MBSL to wherever the coordinator um, indicates they should go. So they also go to the coordinator, or the coordinator can say they need to go to such and such VMO, and here's the address. Pound two for any comments, questions. So please email Abby um, if there's additional comments or questions you didn't want to bring up at this point or you think of as you go through uh, the materials. And just to remind people, the webinar on the 30th is scheduled for four hours. And seeing as we took nearly three for just the questionnaire and the biologics and biosecurity assessment is actually um, even more detailed, uh, I think you should plan for potentially the whole four hours with Jason um, prompting breaks uh, every 50 minutes or so. And we did. There's a question or call. 
there is a caller in the queue, and they're lined up. Uh, yes, thank you for taking my question. What if the producer, uh, the horse owner, has a question about liability? They say, well, I'll let you do venipuncture, but if you kill my $70,000 horse, you're going to pay for it. Who, who's responsible for the cost of the animal if it um, dies during venipuncture? Thanks. We'll go ahead and capture that question, and Abby will get a response out, because I'm not in a position to answer that. Um, I personally have my own liability insurance, but I know a lot of the federal veterinarians don't carry that, so um, we'll try to get you a response. Thank you. The only, the only procedure from my perspective that holds some risk, and you brought it up, um, is the blood collection. Um, I don't believe the kick scratching uh, and picking up feces off the ground uh, poses any uh, risk to the horse. Um, but certainly the venipuncture, although rare, uh, can have the horse react negatively um, to the procedure. So we'll try to get you a response um, by the time we have the webinar on the 30th, or if we get a response before, we'll get that out. Um, I also believe Dr. Marshall said that she would have um, an indication how uh, the um, owner name, address, phone number can be um, sent from the coordinators to the VMOs and AHTs, and uh, hopefully we can send that out via email before next week. Um, if not, she's on the call next week, so we'll get her to answer it then. Well, this is Josie. I want to thank everyone for uh, being on, um, particularly the people that brought up um, questions and comments. Um, I think you'll end up with some more as you look through the materials in more detail. Uh, I'd encourage you to have a hard copy of the questionnaire next to the manual. It is tab four of the manual, but having a separate copy as you look through the pages that um, go into detail, at least for me, was very helpful as I went through the, the manual. And uh, we're going to go ahead, Kim, and uh, I think sign off.